So I'd like to welcome you all to my first ever award show video. 2022 has been a pretty great year for K-pop in my opinion. Not only has it been spreading like wildfire in the West, but we saw the debut of so many great solo artists and groups in general. This year has been a lot better than 2021 and in my opinion, even better than 2020. Like I see a lot of people say that 2022 was a bad year for K-pop and I completely disagree. This year was really, really good. We saw the emergence of some of the biggest girl groups that will most likely dominate the scene for years to come, and we saw some solo debuts of some of the most prominent idols in the industry. Now before we get into it, I want to break down the different categories, what those categories stand for, and some of the rules about this award show. If you want to skip this portion, I'll probably throw a timestamp on screen, or it'll just be like on the video for you to skip to the first award. But first, I'm going to lay some ground rules. Number one, this is an opinionated award show, so it is my personal rankings of these different categories. It's not a fan voted thing, it's not a popularity contest, it's not a sales number thing. This is personal opinion. So if you get offended by by my opinion in any way, please don't be upset, this is a completely subjective thing. I implore you to leave your own list in the comments below, I always read through them and like to see it. I will also say that I'm not going to be talking about every single entry or nomination, I'll have a top three for each category, but I'm not going to talk about all three of them, I'm just going to kind of sum them up when it comes to the number one spot. I did this to make the video as short as possible because I know some award shows that K-YouTubers can make can be very, very long and I don't want to waste your guys' entire day. I do want to make a fan voted one in the future, but I didn't really think the time was right to do it this year, so I feel like maybe next year we could do that instead. And for the final rule, I guess just no toxicity in the comments, so no arguing or anything. You know, this is all just for fun and for personal opinion, so yeah. So the categories are as follows. We have the best rookie group of the year, which is obviously rookie groups that span from around November of last year till now. So groups like Ive and Billy will be included in this spot. We have best male artist, which is encompassing both groups and soloists. Same thing for female as well. We have both best male and female group songs, so not including soloist stuff, it's just going to be girl and boy groups. We have best b-side, which is my personal favorite b-side of the year. We have most improved, which is a category I don't see a lot of other K-YouTubers use, but essentially it is the group that improved the most from a prior comeback to one of their comebacks this year, or maybe just how good they've grown as a group over the year. And then essentially you have your normal Daysang awards, so things like best artist, best album, and best song. I tried to make these more varied. I realistically could have given these to like maybe some of the similar groups over all the awards, but I tried to make it a little more interesting. Because I will say the public opinion and my opinion are not the same. There are some pretty drastic songs and groups that you may not see in some spots that you would typically see. But yeah, those are all the categories and I wanted to keep it relatively short, not too many this year. But hopefully you guys enjoy and I know I don't want to keep you waiting any longer. Let's get right into some awards. Most Improved Artist
For me and most improved, it's all about your previous comeback and your next one. How as a group can you change to be better? And in my opinion, these groups are the ones that did it the best. Enemix had one of the worst debuts we've ever seen and rebounded with a very serviceable first comeback. Treasure impressed me with their Hello comeback and their subsequent album with that, which I thought was very good. I honestly think it was a pretty big improvement over Jik Jin, which was a song that a lot of people didn't like, and I like it a good amount, but it's not amazing. But for me, my most improved group is Billy. And you may say, Rob, that's kind of weird. You talk about how good all of Billy's music is, and that's true. I actually did think that Billy's debut was really, really great. I think it's one of the better rookie girl group debuts I've heard in a long time. But Billy went from being a group that had good music to a group that has amazing music in one comeback. To improve, you don't just have to be bad. You can be good and still improve, and that's the case for Billy. They were already good, and now they became amazing. Billy is my most improved artist of the year. I mean, they released Ginga Minga Yo, and then Ring My Bell. So, yeah, I don't really see an artist that's improved more than them. They are already top tier. Rookie of the Year I will confidently say that this year's Rookie of the Year race is one of the tightest that we've had in K-pop in a long, long time. This was one of the categories that took me the longest to think about, and I think I came to my conclusion. Coming in third is Billy, just simply by here by default. I'm gonna take the other two over them, simply because I think that their songs are a tad bit more replayable. I feel like I can turn them on at any time. Billy, sometimes I have to be in the mood for their stuff. But coming in at a painful number two is Ive for me, and I feel like I have to explain this one. Eleven, Love Dive, and After Like are probably one of the best three-run title track uh, runs that we've ever seen a group period go on, especially a rookie group. But being a great group is a lot more than just releasing good title tracks. You have to have good B-sides, you have to have good performances. Unfortunately, I've only ticks one of those categories for me, which is why I led to my conclusion of Le Seraphim being my personal rookie of the year. They have some of the best B-sides of all of the rookies. They are amazing performers already. And while I don't think Fearless stacks up to any of Ives, even really close, Anti-Fragile is one of the best songs of the year. So congratulations to the Seraphim for making it out of one of the tightest Rookie of the Year races I've ever seen.
maniac. 나서 빠진 것처럼 미쳐 maniac. Bing bing 돌아버리겠지. Maniac. Frankenstein처럼 걸어 maniac. 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 나서 빠진 것처럼 미쳐 maniac. Bing bing 돌아버리겠지. Maniac. 비정상 그 속이 진짜 maniac. She don't go to job, baby. That and then, spin limit. Do the work, chip, baby. Yeah, yeah. Gotta run to the top. Run to the top. Now, baby, go dash. We don't dash. We don't dash. We don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dash. We don't dash. We don't. Baby, we're just getting some. We even drop it like hot, hot, hot. Oh, take your friend, it's so hot. You know they body like hot, hot, hot. What I look for in the best group songs are ones that are catchy but also dynamic and deep. Hot fills the catchy role from Seventeen. This was a song that was so popular, I swear you could not avoid it for like a three week span. Everyone was talking about the song, everyone was singing it and dancing it, and it's for a good reason. The song is so much fun. But Gorilla is that shade of edginess that I needed. It's an incredible mix of rock and punk. Gorilla is exactly what I needed from ATs. This this was a comeback that they needed. Like it was really, really good, especially after like Deja Vu, which I was not as big of a fan of. But for me, the best male group song is Maniac by Stray Kids. It had the best lasting power. I remember when this dropped earlier in the year. Dude, people will not shut up about this song, and it's for a good reason. It is such a wild and wacky song. It's something that I could only see Stray Kids pulling off. It's got an incredibly addictive hook. The chorus is super catchy. The dance is incredible. This song is just the best male group song for me. And it's funny because Case 143 is like a top five male group song for me. I love that song too. Best female group song.
There were so many good female group songs this year, it's actually incredible. It was so hard to shape down this list. Hype Boy is incredibly addictive and fun. Anti-Fragile is a song that just makes you want to dance anywhere you go. The reggaeton influences is something that we desperately needed in K-pop. But the best girl group song of the year for me is Love Dive. There is no other song like this that came out this year. It was an adventure. It was a story. The complex mythology wrapped around this song, the addictive hooks, the chorus, the dance, the instrumental. Like, I'm not joking when I say this is one of the best songs made in K-pop history. I fucking love this song. I've 100% deserves this, even if they didn't win Rookie of the Year for me. Damn, this song was different. It was amazing. Best male artist. While the Male Artist Award may not be as contested as some of the female awards this year, there were still some really great artists this year. Coming number 3 for me is Seventeen, and it's just because of the pure amount of stuff they did this year. This was a very busy year for them. They came out with some very good comebacks like Hot, which was a song that you couldn't avoid for a long time, and World, which was also a very serviceable, very cute song. J-Hope comes in at number 2 purely because of his incredible release of Jack in the Box with Arson and More, which are two of my favorite songs of the year. But ultimately, my favorite male artist of the year was Stray Kids, and I think they deserve it. They were incredibly popular this year, and they released absolute gas this year. They had Maniac and Case 143, and their accompanying albums were two of their best albums, if not their best albums. Their popularity, especially in the West, skyrocketed. This was really their year. For, for an artist. Like, Stray Kids has done so much this year, and I think a lot of people don't give them enough credit for how good of a group they are. 
If BTS didn't exist, Stray Kids would be the largest male group on the planet, period. Best Female Artist For best female artist, it was a lot more contested this time around. For number three, I give it to Taeyeon. Her release with INVU in that album was fantastic. I do think I overplayed it a little bit, but that album's composition is great. Unfortunately, she didn't really release anything since earlier in the year, which I think maybe hurt her rankings on here a little bit, but I will say that album is one of her best, if not personally my favorite album from her. At number two is once again Ive, for basically the same reasons as I said before, that three run stretch is incredible. And of course, coming in number one is Le Seraphim. That's because they dominated this year. Everyone's in love with 
them for a reason. Everything about them as a group is top tier, and it's crazy because they're so early on in their career, they have so much potential. Them and I've both have an incredible amount of potential. I'm a girl group stan, so I was eating well this year. Trust me, I was, I was being fed. B side of the year. so many great b-sides this year i need to leave a couple of very prominent ones off this list like these are my top of the line b-sides but for me it ultimately came down to three and third was run bts 
meshing their older sound with their newer sound is really ambitious for them to do, and they did it really, really well. This song is great. It's fantastic. It's even better live performance. BTS recently has been super bright and light with their music, so to hear a B-side that's much more rough and kind of hard and edgy is good. It's something that we needed from them. And second is Blue Flame. God, Blue Flame is so addictive. It's so much fun. It has a simple melody. It has a simple bass driving it, but it is just a whole dance fest. I just want to dance every single time I listen to this song. They did such a great job. But number one for me is Assigned Anonymous. You guys know how much I love this song. This is like near K-pop perfection for me. This is so, so fantastical, so mystical. I love how video gamey it sounds. It's just, it's such a breath of fresh air in the K-pop scene. Like if you go listen to any mainstream Blackpink or, or even twice to an extent and then listen to this, it's going to sound a lot different. And that's what I love about it. It's, it's a lot different. It's a no skip for me. I've never skipped this song when it's come on. So for me, it is the best B-side of the year. I love it. Artist of the year. So I am the These are the artists that I picked out that dominated their year with their quality music. 
Honestly, you can make an argument for anyone nominated for this to be in the top three. I wouldn't hate you for putting anyone up here. At number three, I had Le Seraphim for all the reasons I previously stated. At number two, I had J-Hope for his incredible Jack the Box piece. But number one, I had to give it to Stray Kids. They've just been it this year. They've released nothing but quality. They've had two albums and a Japanese album. All of this being their best work. Stray Kids has stuck to their formula, and they've wielded it and melded it into something that is uniquely theirs. And it's a sound that works for them, it has worked for them, and it will keep working for them. It is great music, they've pumped out nothing but quality, and I'm very happy to say that without a doubt for me, they are my artists of the year. I, I love everything that they put out. Album of the Year Okay. Rock, rock, diamonds in my back. If you wanna sit down, still be like that. My mom is so bad. Oh my god, then. Okay, I show you what's in my back. Yeah, I'm f Tom Boy. <laughs>
One thing I favor heavily in albums is their composition, structure, storytelling, and all of the albums I picked out to put on this list are all very good at doing those things. Indigo is a recent release by RM that I've fallen in love with. It is incredible at storytelling and showing us a different side of RM that we didn't know about. Weaving in the sense of losing yourself and your passion and wishing you weren't popular to rebounding and saying that you don't need to lose yourself in the past. I Envy You by Taeyeon was an incredible piece of work for her. It follows this very strict theme throughout the album. It's very moody and dark compared to some of her other projects. I Envy You is shaded in this gray texture that is just very foreboding and kind of moody, especially during the month of February. I thought it fit the, the cold, the snowy temperature of the season very well. But my favorite album of the year is Jack in the Box by J-Hope. This album was fantastic, incredible composition, incredible production, even better storytelling, showing us a different side of J-Hope that we didn't know from BTS. I mean, he incorporates eight to nine different genres on this album. You have anything from grunge garage rock to West Coast inspired hip hop to pop rap and then some R&B thrown in and even a really lighthearted pop track. It's incredible how much he does on this album in so little space. I'm honestly super excited for whatever he releases next because this was an incredible album. It was damn near perfect for me. Song of the Year
정상인 척 가득 힘좀 빼어 짓고 있는 미소들은 제일 악기 풀리면 다 똑같아 눈을 닮은 속여 허브제는 풀렸네 정신을 간신히 잡채 눈 한번 깜빡이고 빼 다시 세상이 정한 정상인 코스프레 준비 It's done Are you guys really surprised at the number one spot? But anyway, these songs are incredible. Every single one of these songs is a song of the year candidate. Maniac is fantastic by Stray Kids. The raw, like, just crazy energy of the song perfectly embodies the theming. And I, I don't know, that song was stuck in my head for like months. Anti-Fragile is like like a shake your ass song, you know what I mean? Like this song is so much fun. Reggaeton is something that we need more in K-pop and I think a lot of companies will probably try to use it after seeing how popular it has been with Anti-Fragile, but for real, this song exudes so much energy, so much confidence that they give out and it really helped skyrocket Le Seraphim into huge popularity. They were already popular before, don't get me wrong, but this really put a spotlight on them and they answered. But are you surprised with number one? Love Dive is K-pop perfection. It's everything I want in a K-pop song. It's catchy it's deep it has lore behind it it's decorated with a fun and experimental production it's just it's great it's fantastic it is the best possible scenario for a first comeback you could have and i've dominated this song has been popular and it's charted all year it feels like when you release a song eight months ago and it's still relatively popular now you know you did something right and this song will probably not go away anytime soon Again, all of these songs that I put on here are really, really good, but trust me, this song cleared by a mile for me. This is uh, incredible work. This song is so damn good, it nearly made me put Ive as Rookies of the Year just because of this song alone. Thank you guys for watching through the video if you're listening to this. Again, I didn't want this to be too long. Again, it's probably still going to be relatively long, but I wanted to keep it decently short. I don't want to waste your guys' time. This was a great year for K-pop, and I don't really believe all the people who say it wasn't. I think there was a lot of diversity this year, a lot of great releases, a lot of great soloists that I didn't even really mention. And again, this is all opinionated. This isn't going by charts or popularity. Uh, there's plenty of artists and songs on here that I didn't mention that people are immediately going to the comment section and say like, oh my gosh, where's Pop by Nan? You know what I mean? Like, Nan is one of the one of the more fun soloists that debuted this year, but I didn't put her anywhere on the list, which can be surprising to some people. Please go ahead and tell me yours for these different categories down below. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And hopefully 2023 will be as good, if not better, than 2022 for K-pop. I'm sure it will. We're going to see a lot more experimentation, a lot more different sounds. But let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys next year, maybe? <laughs>